and share my screen. Let me turn my video off right quick. All right. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. We're in the wrong place. Yes. Get where I told you. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so today, um, we're going to talk about uh, factors that determine PK. We kind of touched on it Friday. Believe it or not, I have a guy that went. I used to go to church with. He goes to school at Dillard. And they actually studying the same thing, but not in as, as much detail. So we had actually did a little study session with them on Saturday, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, somebody, somebody was asking about the exam two. No, exam two won't be until next Friday. So we got all this week and next week, and then we'll take that second exam. <clears throat> well, not the second exam, the third exam, my bad. So factors that determine PKA, we've already talked about the fact that uh, for PKA is roughly based on conjugate-based stability, right? So just do this generic again, AH plus a base. That comes in, you do proton transfer, and then that gives you A A minus plus H base. All right, so how stable this is, <clears throat> is going to determine how fast H plus comes off. Right, so the PK is always going to be roughly. Dr. Russell, yes. Sorry, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, when you say um something has to be stable, do you mean like fulfilling the octet rule? What do you mean exactly by being stable? So that's a good question. So part of that is fulfilling the octet rule. Part of it is okay. Let me, let me, let me, let's go back to thinking about what we're dealing with. So the conjugate base has a charge, right? It's got an extra pair of electrons. Is that right? Yes. So what do I do with it, right? That's what I mean by stable. Can I take those electrons and spread them out some type of way so that they're not localized on one atom or, they're more, or the, the electron cloud around the atom is more diffuse, right? One of the two, but I want those electrons to be <coughs> as, uh, as diffuse as possible. I want that electron cloud to be as diffuse as possible. That's what I mean by stability in this case. Okay. Right, so I want to be able to take those electrons and either share them some kind of way to delocalize them or something to make make that situation a little less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you, you just don't want the electrons to be concentrated in one place if possible. And if they are, you want it. You want them to be on an atom that can that can handle that. But if if um, delocalizing the electrons uh, clarifies the stability, mm -hmm. wouldn't wouldn't all of them be stable? No, they all be it depends on it. Well, it depends on what the acid is and what the conjugate base is. We're going to look at some examples to kind of bear that out, right? So you have five factors that we're going to deal with. And based on those five factors, you're going to be able to compare two conjugate bases and see which one is the which one is more stable based on those five factors. Okay. So, so conjugate base stability. And it and a, a, a layman's way to say that is how well does the conjugate base handle that charge or those electrons? That's what that's what we're we're dealing with. So the 
pK is, is basically determined by the stability of the conjugate base. How well that atom where that charge is holds up uh, with that extra pair of electrons. That's what we're looking at. All right. Can you, like, can you give an example of what you're yeah. talking about with the conjugate base? Yeah, yeah. I'll take an example. Um, let me see if I can take one from the problems that we're working on. Because we kind of touched it Friday, but I, I didn't want to go like all the way into it because I didn't want anybody. Uh, let's take an example from up here. And we're going to take, actually, let me cut this because this is a great, a great place to start. Oh no. Put it on the, I'm going to put that on the blank page because I don't want to run out of space. All right, so let me paste that here. Enlarge it a little bit. Oh, come on. All right. <clears throat> so each one of these compounds is a city in its own way, like not very acidic. Because you see here, W has a pK of 25. <clears throat> That's kind of standard for what we call an alpha proton. Right? You see how that carbon is adjacent or next door to a carbonyl? That's what we call an alpha proton. So it's roughly somewhere anywhere between 20 and 25 for the pK. And then you see the pK here on nitrogen. On X is 23, it's a little bit less. And here on Y, 8.8, .8, and then here on the car on the uh, carboxylic acid is 4.2. So now we need to think about why, right? So I'm gonna give you a mnemonic. And a way to think about this. So this is these are the factors that you're comparing when you talk about conjugate base stability. Hires, right? So it's hybridization induction resonance electronegativity and size. Those are your factors that stabilize conju a conjugate base. And that's what you're going to compare when you look at the conjugate base of any two acids, the conjugate bases, trying to figure out why one is more or less acidic than the other. All right. So we're going to start out with X and W. That's A. Right. First, it says show the structure of the conjugate base. Let me get let me drill this into you and make it as plain as possible. Anytime you're comparing acidity and you don't have numbers. Right, what you what you want to be able to do is draw the conjugate base and figure out which conjugate base is more stable. All right, here we have numbers, but we still need the, the reps and the practice of drawing the conjugate base. So we're gonna draw the conjugate base of each one of those compounds up there. So you have here. That's the conjugate base of the first one, right? The 
conjugate base is the acid once it loses a proton. And the way that happens, how does it lose its proton? A base comes in. I'm just going to say OH minus since we, we can all rally around that one. Base comes in, boom, attacks the H, and then those electrons go back onto the atom that the H is bonded to. That never changes. All right? Never, ever, 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 ever. So anytime you think about the conjugate base, it's the acid after it's lost the proton. Any questions about that? These are not great acids, but the protons are acidic nonetheless, and, and you have to add a base in order to remove them. All right, so, so is everybody in agreement with what that first conjugate base should look like down here? So this would, this would be the conjugate base for W. Yes, no. All right, and then for X, I'm, I'm just gonna draw in a, a circle in here. It's the same thing. For X, the conjugate base will be, come on man, H. Long pair here, long pair here, and a negative charge. Everybody agree? Anybody disagree or don't see it? Say again. So these are this, these are all my what my conjugate bases are going to look like. This is X. Dr. Russell. Yes. So do we have to find the resonance for it? That's one. That's we're gonna get to that. Okay. We're gonna get to that because <laughs> it depends on what your conjugate base is. In this case, you can do resonance on all of them. Right? Because all of them fit into that allylic uh carbocation pattern. I mean, I'm sorry, allylic anion pattern. All right, so what would the conjugate base for Y look like? Somebody help me out. Wait, hey, Dr. Russell, I have a question for X. Okay. So why did, like, because before we just took off the hydrogen that was connected to the CH2 for W, mm -hmm. why did we do that for X? Why do we take off the one? Because, again, we, we have to compare the conjugate bases. And you can't compare the conjugate base without removing the proton from the acid. Right, so we're doing the same thing here that we did in the in the previous example. Right, and it already had one lone pair. So we can't, so when we're talking about comparing acids and figuring out which one is more or less acidic than the other, you have you, all you're doing is comparing the conjugate bases and how stable the conjugate bases are relative to each other. Okay. Does that make sense? I think I get it, yeah. Yeah, so so we're gonna do the same thing for Y, right? We're gonna put in a base, a generic base. And then, then boom, this is coming here, and then this is coming here, and keep in mind that it already has a long pair. Right, so for Y, Y is gonna be, <clears throat> this is gonna be the conjugate base for Y. My dog is trying to get out. I'm not letting him out though. If y'all hear him scratching at the door, he's trying to come out here because every time I'm out here, there's a, a salamander and a frog that live under the deck. So he just spends all day sniffing, trying to flush them out. Ever since this thing started, it, we've been six months since March. Every day, same thing, hours, sniffing, scratching, nothing. And then when they do come out, he doesn't do anything. The frog was sitting right next to him the other day. And he didn't budge. He just, he didn't even realize the frog was next to him. So, anyway, all right, let's go back to here. What would you do here? 
to gen to show the conjugate base for uh, Z. Anything different? No. No. It's just the, it's the same. Uh, it's the same mechanism. And the reason I'm doing it is because the more reps we get, the better we get at it. Keep in mind, oxygen already has two long pairs on it. All right, so I'm going up here, and then boom, giving that pair of electrons back to oxygen, All right? So that conjugate base is going to look like this. Right? That's the conjugate base for Z. And this is why. All right, any questions about that? Again, it, with, even though we have the numbers, the question is asking us to explain why X is, strong, is a stronger acid than W, or why Y is a stronger acid than Z, <laughs> or why Y is a stronger acid than X, so on and so forth. Right? So let's do that. Right? So let's take that first question. So we did A. We, we showed the structure of the conjugate bases, right? We're not going to draw the resonance forms right away, even though resonance is one of the factors that we're going to discuss. We'll do it then. All right? So it says explain why X is a stronger acid than W. So X has a pKa of 23. W has a pKa of 25. Can somebody tell me how many more times, how many times, how do I say that? How many more times acidic W is, or X is than W, based on what we did finding? Is it 100? 100, 10 to the second. That's exactly right. Who was that? Brittany. All right, nice work. It's 100 times more acidic. You're exactly right. All right, but why? That's the question. So if we look at the conjugate basis, we're going to be, be able to explain that. Right, so one of the way, one of our factors, keep in mind we got hybridization, induction, resonance, electronegativity, and size. Right here, size is not really a factor because nitrogen and carbon are not that, there's not that much difference in their atomic radius. So we're not gonna look at the size. They're both sp3 hybridized, right? Am I right about that? Yeah. So size is not applicable, hybridization not applicable because they're both sp3 hybridized. Induction, nah, there's not really anything, any other functional group that's close by that can cause induction. Because uh, there's a carbonyl next to both charges. So that's kind of that kind of negates the inductive effect. All right. But then you do have. Uh, resonance and electronegativity that they both can undergo. Well, not undergo. You do have resonance that they both can undergo, and then you can look at the difference in electronegativity of the two atoms. So let's do that, right? They both can under, undergo resonance. Is that right? So I can do this for that, and then I can also do this on that side. Is that right? So I'm gonna say both can do resonance. So that's negligible. So what's left? Electronegativity. Electronegativity. Why is that important? Keep in mind, when I make the conjugate base, the atom where I put those electrons, that atom actually matters, right? It matters if it's highly electronegative or not very electronegative. It matters if it's big or small. If it's sp3 hybridized versus sp hybrid, all of that matters. So what we do is basically go down that checklist and figure out what we're comparing. So here we're comparing electronegativity. So on the periodic table, where is carbon relative to nitrogen? To the left or to the right? To the left. To the to the right of it. All right. It's to the right of it. So nitrogen <clears throat> is a much more electronegative atom than carbon. 
So the atom where the charge is, that's the atom I care about, is more, ne more electronegative. That means that that charge is a little bit more stable on nitrogen than it is on carbon. Are y'all following that? Yes. And so what that means is that when I compare the, the pKa's, now I know why. One of them has a pKa of 23, and the other one has a pKa of 25. Because when I put, when I make the conjugate base and I put the charge on nitrogen, it's a little more comfortable <laughs> being on nitrogen than it is on carbon. If that makes any sense, right? When I once I pluck off that proton. Where that charge ends up matters. So when I'm comparing acids, I'm looking at the atom, where that pair of electrons goes uh, after you do proton transfer. We're okay with that? So somebody tell me why X is a better acid than W. In your own words. Don't let the birds outdo you. <laughs> Didn't we um just say that nitrogen was more electronegative than carbon? Yes. And, um, the conjugate base of that, um, the nitrogen would make it a better conjugate base? Yes. So the, the conjugate base is more stable because nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. So therefore, W is a better acid. The OX is a better acid than W. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead. I thought what determines if um, like the better acid is how it dissociates. But if it's more stable, doesn't that mean it's going to dissociate less? No, no. See, you're thinking about dissociation and not proton transfer. See, that's why you use pKa for organic acids, because dissociation is not always, uh, is not always spontaneous. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, okay. So when you're talking about reacting with a base, then the, the proton transfer is going to happen faster if the product of the proton transfer is more stable. You understand what I'm saying? Or no? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, I hate to keep putting it in terms of relationships, but it's kind of like, you know, somebody who is a little bit more independent, they don't care if, if you break up with them. Like, all right, fine, bye. I'm good by myself. So that's how these proton transfers work. When the proton transfer happens, if, if the conjugate base is stable, it's going to happen readily because the conjugate base is like, all right, bye. I don't need you anyway. Like, in, you know, kind of like that. But it's not spontaneous. Like in GChem, when you talk about Ka, that's dealing with spontaneous dissociation, where the acid spontaneously breaks up into its two parts. Here, you need a base because the acids don't readily dissociate. Hopefully that made sense. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so now let's do, let's look at the next one. It says, explain why, why is a stronger acid than X? Okay. So we got a couple of factors at play here. Let's look at why. Why is over here. And we've already looked at X. We know X is basically stabilized. That conjugate base is basically stabilized by resonance and electronegativity. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So if we look at Y, is Y going to be stable? Again, the charge between on X and Y, the charge is on nitrogen. So size, hybridization, induction, we don't, we just, we can, not worry about those because it's the same atom. Well, not let me not say that. Size and hybridization. I don't want to skip induction. I just gave the answer away, but I don't want to skip that. So size and hybridization are the same. They're both sp3 hybridized. The charge is on the same atom in both cases. So size and hybridization, we don't have to spend time worrying about that. Now, now when we look at nitrogen, electronegativity also, right? Because it's the same atom. So the electronegativity, there's no difference. So size, hybridization, and electronegativity, we don't have to consider those when we look, when we're comparing uh, X and Y. 
So what's left? Resonance, and then what else? Induction. Induction, good. So resonance, can, can Y do resonance? We already showed that X can do resonance, is that right? Yeah. Can Y do resonance? Yes. It can. I can push this pair of electrons here, and I can, it's an allylic anion motif. It's the same, like just like X, right? So both can do resonance when we're comparing X and Y, right? They can both do resonance. What, what, what's different between X and Y? Y has that. You got this hydroxyl group over here. Hydro. All right. Now here's the question. They both do resonance, same size, same hybridization, same electronegativity, but now you got this hydroxyl group and oxygen is the second most electronegative atom in the periodic table. So what you're going to do induction. Yeah, who said that? Brittany. Brittany, good. You got a big, gigantic dipole going this way, right? So why is stabilized not only by resonance, but also by what? Induction. Induction. You following? Now you see what induction, induction is moving electron density, whereas resonance is actually moving electrons. Did I talk about that Friday, about like a dandelion and the electrons being in a cloud around the atom? I think I did. And induction kind of kind of thins that cloud out by pulling electron density towards the more electronegative atom, right? So this yeah. is gonna be, I, yeah, I remember talking about that Friday. So why is gonna be stabilized by both resonance and induction right so now you now you stabilizing with two factors instead of one so when you look at y as it as compared to x what can you say how would you explain it let's let's start thinking in terms of saying this in complete sentences right x is a strong uh, y is a stronger acid than x because the conjugate base is stabilized by what? Resonance and induction. Resonance and induction. Good. Are y'all are y'all following this? Is this coming clear? Yes. No. A little. Yes. Yeah. It's getting there. So it's getting there. That's all I want to hear. As long as it's getting there, it might not be perfect. Uh, clear immediately, but it is coming. I have a question. Come on. Is it because both of them can do resonance? The yeah. fact that they can do resonance? Yeah. So okay. that they, if they can both do resonance, then there's no added stabilization by resonance unless one can do more resonance than the other. You follow okay. what I'm saying? Yes. Then that means that that charge is going to be more delocalized in one than the other. Because that's, that's all you're really trying to do is delocalize the charge. OK. All right, all right. Could somebody answer Z for me. Why Z is better than Y? Here's Z. Let me, let me zoom out a little bit. Here's Z down here. You see why? Can you do resonance on Z? Yes. Yeah, you can do it. It's the same pattern. Let me fix that double bond. Yeah, but it's it's the exact same pattern. So of course you can do resonance on that. Right? So Z and Y both can do resonance, is that right? Yes. What What other thing do, can we compare? All right, so as far as hybridization is concerned, both nitrogen and oxygen are both sp3 hybridized. So that's not a factor, right? Electronegativity? The, it, the electronegativity of oxygen compared to nitrogen, right, is much greater. Oxygen is 3.5. I think nitrogen is something like 3.1. That's a big difference. So the fact that the charge is on a more highly electronegative atom, coupled with the fact that it can do resonance, and the charge ends up on another oxygen, that means that that uh, acid Z is going to be a much stronger acid than Y. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Look, tell me how many 
times more acidic Z is than Y. Based on what we did Friday. And then tell me how you came how you came up with your answer. Man, it's so nice out here. Can y'all hear those birds? They just having a whole conversation. Anybody? Why Z is a better acid than Y? Well, how no, how many more times acidic Z is than Y? I said 10 to the 4.4. Okay. So about 10,000, you said 10, is it 4 point? Yeah, 4.6, so let's round up to five. So about, what is that, 100,000? 10 to the fifth? Yeah. About 100,000 times more cities. Just based on the fact that the negative charge is, is, is better suited on oxygen than it is on nitrogen, even with the induction that's in NY, right? Z is still a better answer. Are we, uh, is it clicking a little bit more? Yeah, I'm understanding what you're saying. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do some more examples. Let's do some more examples. That's why I like these old books because they they torture you. They just hit you with example after example. A lot of the, a lot of these problems are from like this old book. I can't remember the guy Leon somebody. Uh, let's see. All right, boom, let's do this one. Let's do 150. And it says, no, sorry, that's 151, my bad. We're doing 151. <clears throat> For each compound show, it says the following compounds can all react as acids. What you're looking at now is the proton that's here. Y'all following that? Yes. All right. And so it says for each compound show its conjugate base. Why do we care about the conjugate base? We have no numbers, right? Yeah. So That's now we need to now we're gonna base our ranking on how stable the conjugate base is based on these five factors again, right? If I can get my mind right. Yes. I have no numbers, so this is all I have to rely on is what I know about hires, right? Okay, so let me cut this because we got we need some room. I don't want to squeeze it, try to squeeze this in. That'll make the notes a lot more orderly if, if we can put it somewhere else. Come on now. I hate Apple products. Thank you. All right, let me put a page in here. All right. Which problem are we on? We're doing 151. I'm about to paste it uh, right here. On, hold up, it, it copied the highlights and not the problem. Let me go back. So it's this problem 151. Now, this would be so much easier if I was just on a whiteboard in a classroom. All right. You got to be freaking kidding me. 
Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, yeah. By that time, it'll be, what, 3 o'clock? Uh, let, let me erase all these highlights. There we go. Third time to charm. Come on, baby. Do what I told you. And the third time is not the charm. Because I cut the wrong problem. It's this one. We could have been in lunch by now. Oh, no, can we not do that? I think we got it this time, two years later. All right, now we're straight. Dang it, almost made me cuss. I went to church yesterday. All right, <clears throat> so we're looking at these protons right here. These are my acidic protons, all right? It says for each compound, show its conjugate base. So let's do that. So CH3, C double bond, O, O, I'm putting the electrons in too. That's the conjugate base of the first one. Anybody disagree? Agree. We can even follow this up to, <clears throat> we can Google the PKAs and, and double check our answer. CH3C O O O H. Put some long pairs. Uh oh, my bad. Some long pairs in, in my charge. And then the last one is uh let's see up CH2 C double bond O O H. So that's the conjugate base for that one. All right. So right off the break, let's let's think about our factors again. We got hybridization, induction, resonance, electronegativity, and size. We can rule out size, electronegativity, and really we can rule out hybridization because they're all sp3 hybridized so this thing is either going to be stabilized by induction or resonance y'all following that all all four of them are going to either be stabilized by induction or resonance yes or no yes okay yes all right so let's look at uh the first one <laughs> is there going to be any induction there, you think? Is there, is there a functional group close by that's highly electronegative? Nope. No, this is only this is only going to be stabilized by resonance. So resonance only. All right, and then, uh, okay, so now we have, let's compare these two. Right, so what is, what about here? I can do resonance, but what else can I do? You see this big CF3 group out here? That, that, let me write that out. That looks just like this. So you got a fluorine here, here, and here. Right next door to that negative charge. Right? So what it what what's 
what do you think SDF3 group is capable of? Induction. It can do induction. Fluorine is highly electronegative, so you're going to have a big dipole. Let me change the color up on that. You're going to have a big dipole going in this direction toward that CF3 group. So this is stabilized by what? Resonance. Resonance and, and induction. Induction. And then, so let's look at the other one. What, so you have another CF3 group here, but what's the difference? Say, say again. Never mind, because for a minute I thought that was carboxylic acid. So it's still gonna be stabilized by resonance. And there's still induction, but what's the difference? Look at, let, we're comparing these two now. What's the difference? Where's the CF3 group mm -hmm. relative to the charge in the second species? It's another group over because you have the CH2. It's little, it, so it's a little bit further away, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the induction is not going to be as uh it's not going to be as prevalent because the CF3 group is a little bit further away. So it's still stabilized by resonance and induction, but the CF, with the CF3 group being further away, the induction is not as influential. Because remember, induction is really more based on proximity to the charge. Uh, so the closer it is to the charge, the more it's able to stabilize that charge. The further away it is, the less it's able to stabilize. Question. Go ahead. So when we're talking about the induction, we were talking about how close and far it is from the charge. Are we talking about like the next residence form after we move the electrons mm -hmm. the oxygen you or did, from like the original conjugate? Yeah, it's so the original compound, let's say you have an inductive group, you have a atom, and then here's your charge, right? Your inductive group is gonna be somewhere back if it's adjacent then that's fine. If you put another carbon between that charge and the inductive group, then the inductive group is, is less able to, to delocalize that electron density. So the closer it is, the more able it is to delocalize it, the further away it is, the less able it is. It doesn't matter if it's on the resonance form or not. Okay. Because the, the location of the function of the inductive group is gonna be there. No matter which resonance form you show, that that group doesn't move, right? Right. Yeah. All right. So what do y'all think? Now, what about this last one? What is that stabilized by? It's a peroxide, by the way. Is it just electronegativity? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. All right, so what do you think? Which one do you think is the most acidic out of all three, out of all four answers? Which one would you pick to be the most acidic? The second one. Second one? Okay, we can go with that. I like that answer. So we're gonna, let, we're gonna call this one. We're gonna label them from one to four. One is the most, because we always have to define the scale, and then four is the least. All right? What 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 do you think is the next most city? The last uh, one. The last one. I think the last one. Okay, we can do that. And then what about the third most city? The first it's gonna be between first the first one. one and the third one. You say so that's three and that's four? Yeah, we've already we done both because B and C ask you to rank them, rank the acids, and then rank. Morning, how you doing? All right, it says rank. Sorry about that. The conjugate basis and then rank the acids. So the conjugate base rank and the acid rank is going to be the same, right? Because the best conjugate base is going to correspond with the strongest acid. Now let's let's prove it. Let's look up. Uh, I want you somebody look up acetic acid. That's the top one.
It should be four point something, about four point six or four point seven. Uh, four point seven five. Say four point seven. Four point seven five. All right. Somebody look up trifluoroacetic acid. That's this one. Now, make sure you spell fluorine right, too. You're not, I always say that you're not making cookies. So it's not fluoro, F-L-O-U-R-O. It's F-L-U-O-R-O. -O. So trifluoroacetic acid. Anybody got it? It should be negative something. About negative 10 or negative 11, somewhere up in there. Anybody got it yet? <laughs> Trifluoroacetic acid. PKA. I got 2.6. You said 2.6? Yeah, but I don't think. Mine says 0 0.23. Negative <laughs> or positive? It just says positive. The PKA of TFA is 0 0.23. Got it on this other handout, too. Let's see. Maybe we can kill some time. You said floral. Acetic yeah. acid, right? Trifluoroacetic acid. Yeah, I got it says 2.6. 2.6. All right, we'll take it. 2.6. Now somebody look up uh peroxyacetic acid. P-E-R-O-X-Y. Peroxyacetic acid. It's say 8.2 to 8.4. Okay, 8.2. Look like we are we on a roll now. So let's say 8.2, and then uh, let me think. Wait, what was the name of the third one? Peroxy, P-E-R-O-X-Y, acetic acid. The per this is another functional group that we didn't really talk about a lot, but it's it's the you see how that O O H, that extra oxygen. We call that a peroxide. Mm. And then let me see. Uh, let me see. Trifluoroethanoic acid. Gave me the wrong one. Trifluoroethanoic acid. Trifluoroethanoic. So I can find this last one. Only giving me trifluoroacetic acid. Uh, let me see something. Oh, no, no, no. My bad. My bad. My bad. It's actually propanoid. It's three carbons. Trifluoro. Propanoid. Got it. For you. All right, let me let me get the PKA of that. Trifluoro, come on, man, got things to do. I found it. Hold up one second. Let me pull it up. Where's the PKA?
is not working. Where is the PK of that? That one I can't find. Trifluoropionic acid. God dang it. It's giving me a PKA of the only one that's coming up. It says saying it's 3.06, but I don't believe that. It's got to be in a different solvent or something. Because that shouldn't be uh, higher. I mean, it, the PK shouldn't be lower than trifluoroacetic acid. Oh, you know what? It's not. This is 3.06. What do you think? So we have 4.75 for acetic acid, 2.6 for trifluoroacetic acid, 3.06 for uh tripropionic acid or propionic acid and then uh for the peroxide 8.2 did we get it right i think we did hey, dr Marcel, can you scroll up a little bit yep i just zoom out how about that is that better yes thank you so we got that uh, we we pegged it right, so the induction plus the resonance that added stability from the induction <laughs> made those two fluorinated acids a little bit more acidic. Is that does that make sense now, or a little bit more sense? So is the fluoroacetic acid the strongest yeah. um, acid? Yeah. Okay. It's 2.6. Okay. PKA of 2.6, and then you got a PKA of 4.75 for acetic acid, 3.06 for, let me write the name of this one down too. It's that one is the weakest acid because it has the highest PKA, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a fail, epic fail. <laughs> I'll write it up here. So we had acetic acid. I'm just going to write all the names down. Acetic acid. We had trifluoro. Acetic acid. Can somebody tell me why it's trifluoro? What do you think? We have the three fluoros. It's the three fluorines, right? Three fluorines. Yeah. We had uh, peroxy, acetic acid, and then we had trifluoro, propionic acid. Right? And we said that this was the strongest, that was one, this was two, this was three, and this was four. And we based it on the factors that stabilize conjugate bases. In this case, it was induction and resonance that caused, that gave the conjugate basis stabilization. All right, any questions about that? We're gonna do more of this on Wednesday. So don't trip. All right, 
we're actually on Wednesday, we're going to look at this one. And we're going to apply the same principles. All right. Any questions about anything? No question. That's, that's, that can be good or that can be bad. You can either not know what to ask or you can be sufficiently uh, satisfied with what you know so far. Well, Dr. Russell. Yes. I had wrote some questions on my notes. You said we can screenshot, like if we wrote our notes on like an iPad or whatever, we can screenshot mm -hmm. that and send it to you to ask you for help? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, anytime. Just email it. All right, thank send you. It, anytime you do that though, send it to my personal account. I'm gonna put that in my in the chat box because I my personal account is linked to my iPad. And so I can just write okay. on it in my app and send it right back to you. All right, I'm waiting on you to put it in there. All right, let me get it off of Dr. Russell, I have another question. Go ahead. Um Ask so I asked you last class, I don't know if you remember, but that F C groups assignment. Uh-huh. The functional group. I thought mm -hmm. we I thought we discussed that already. We did. I, I thought you were gonna open it, but I didn't see it like reopened. I added. I should. It should be a second attempt. I didn't clear it. I just added another attempt. Oh okay okay. I'll check. Thank you. Yeah. Are you talking about for the for the homework? Mm -hmm, that assignment. I had. I guess I had put it in the wrong tab or whatever. Oh yeah. Hold up. Let me let me let me do that. So that's my personal email address. Anytime you want to screenshot questions, just send it to that. Open that on my iPad. I did, I did the same thing, Dr. Russell. Hold up. So Go ahead. A second attempt on mine as well. For the for the functional group assignment. Let me do this. Let me just go in and all, all the attempts. Because I think nobody nobody turned in the right thing in that slot. So what I'll do is I'll just go into Blackboard and just clear all the attempts, and then you can put the right thing in. Yeah, and this is Nefertiti. I had emailed you. I know. I saw it. Okay, so then, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> you said you going to clear them or just, just put a second attempt? I don't think – you can't do that with the assignment. You're going to do that with a quiz or a test. Oh. Let me, let me run my thing, man. What you got a problem? With <laughs> it out? I tell you, boy, y'all get more more bold by the semester. Nah, don't do it that way. Do it my way. I'm doing <laughs> That's it my not way. That's what I was saying, Doctor Russell. I'm just messing. With you. I'm just messing with you. I'm just gonna clear it out, and that way you can go back and put the right thing. It's the functional group assignment. Yes. Let me just go ahead and do that now, cause I'm already in the shell for that for this class. Uh, let me open it up. Open up the module, and you tell me: if, Am I looking? I'm looking at the right thing. There we go. So it's this assignment right here, right? Is that right? Can't see nothing. Oh, my bad. I gotta do a. Uh, Share my screen again, my fault. Is that right? This one? Yes. What? Okay, so what's supposed to go right there? So we have part of this problem. Part of this problem set was dealing with functional groups, right? Right here. This very top part is right here. And then I had an extra credit in one of these things. I think I just turned that into that, where you had to identify the point. It says extra credit. You can put that in there too. That way I don't have to create another link for that. And I'll just add, I'll just increase the number of points that is working. Okay, so I had did that and then I put the the worksheet you just showed, I put that under the IMS. You said it was a long one. 
but I don't know. I'll have to go. Just just put it in the chat. You can do a private chat and just put uh what you submitted and I'll go back and look at it. Okay. And the last one, so I I have put my extra credit on the Orleans extra credit. Right here? Yeah, that wasn't supposed to go right there. No, because that's a different oleandrin. It was a different count. Remember, we did that. Uh, we put we just took it from the internet and we walked through it. So it's a different compound. Oh, okay. Yeah, that the compound that's up here is taxol. So it's not the same. Oh, okay. All right. We 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 square now. Everybody good. Yes, thank you. All right. All right, I'm going to stop recording.